Hey guys, back again for another review video. Sticking with figure kits this week, and finally going back to a subject we haven't looked at in a while with another Frame Arms Girl kit. This time, we're looking at the main version of, and I'm still probably going to butcher the pronunciation of her name, but Res Edgar, and this time in the Atter version. Let's open her on up and take a look. Okay, uh, starting out again with the still bagged parts, because I really don't, for not take them out, because they're small size and just how easy they're going to get lost. Uh, we start with the different options we have for the hands. Hopefully the light's not going to make it so you can't really see. But we have a total of five different styles of hands, clinched, open, partially open holding, and so forth. Again, the sort of rubbery, at least, or actually on these, it looks like they did not go with just like a rubbery plastic. These are actually proper uh, ABS plastic. So that's good. Uh, moving on, we've got three different pre-made faces, as well as, for some reason, they also included her um, armpits in the here, for some reason. I don't know. That's, that was an odd one choice that I have no explanation for, but uh, three different styles of faces, two of which are very similar, just one just sort of a neutral face, one they're slightly smirking, and the last a sort of panic look. Now, moving on, this is where things start getting complicated. Uh, we'll actually this time start with the clear parts of which there are many. Um, all the clear parts in this kit, which comprise all the various blades and effect parts and so forth, are covered in this sort of translucent color change uh, coating. Uh, I've honestly never really encountered what they've done with this. As you can, hopefully it's showing up on camera. It has this weird, almost slight tackiness to it. I, I, I'm not really sure how quite to adequately ex describe it. And to be honest, it has me concerned as to how well this will take pain, or if I'm either going, or in general, you'd either have to try and strip it using something like uh, Simple Green or um, any other sort of stuff like that. Or if you'd have to, I almost wonder, have to recast the parts. So I, I'm not sure. I mean, that, this isn't like the, you know, that sort of fakey plate chrome that you'd see on an auto kit. This is honestly something else. Um, granted, it has a neat effect, and if you want to just do a straight build, it does give you a fantastic look right out of the gate without having to do anything, as you can see here on some more of the blade parts and one of the shin guard parts. But, yeah, as to how it will take the paint, I, I, I really don't know. This... This is an odd one. Uh, if someone happens to know, uh, feel free to leave a comment down um, below. I, I'd honestly like to know. Uh, this one's left me scratching my head. Now, to give you an idea, just the size, here you can see two of the uh, blade scythe parts. I mean, they're quite large. So this kit, once built, will you know, definitely draw some attention to it just from sort of the, I guess you could call it a stage presence of it. Now, uh, moving on, we now get to into more of the meat of the kit with some of her weapon parts, which are very nicely detailed, thankfully lacking that sort of uh, spray, overspray type effect to them. So the ease, you shouldn't have any issues painting. Um, yeah. Uh, as far as detail, 
and hopefully this will show up on camera one of these days I really do need to get a proper mo camera monitor other than just the little side screen um, detailing is quite nice uh, the only thing I would say maybe in some certain areas you might want to just pick out a couple little lines here and there just to give them a little more depth and detail Again, much the same on double sprues but again, a lot of the weapons on this kit are big, <laughs> to say the least. She has two big, massive scythes. So definitely once built up, they are going to be quite impressive. Continuing on more of the armor detail parts, uh, this time getting into sort of the backpack flight unit she has. Again, a lot of the sort of mechanical deals really pop out on this kit and just scream to be, you know, individually painted up. I mean, it's definitely going to be a labor of love to get her done and done right. I mean, just truly nicely done. There's a lot of engineering that went into thinking this kit up. Now we're starting to get into her body parts, uh, starting here with one of her hair spurs, including the side back pieces as well as her ponytails now this is one of the differences between this kit the base version and the uh, bikini version we looked at previously uh, with this one she instead has two blonde pigtails as opposed to her normal short uh, hair continuing on uh, this sprue is common to them both albeit this time in blonde <coughs> Now, uh, in the last video, uh, we talked briefly uh, about this sprue, saying obviously I would cover it on this one since this is the main difference in terms of body with this one and the previous one, the previous one being a bikini, this time being a single piece. So now we'll go into more depth. Uh, it's broken down in two main sections, the her core section, comprising her lower torso, and an upper section comprising her, of her bust and back. By doing it in this way, it does allow you a bit of movement that you, if you built something like a Gundam kit, you wouldn't get, as this section of the torso is now going to be able to be positioned independently of the rest of the torso, which ultimately is a little more lifelike. Uh, overall, I think it's got its good points and its bad points, Main bad point being if you wanted to, you know, have a bit of uniformity as if it were human torso, you're going to have to do some filling in with something like this, given the complexity that could cause problems. So it's definitely one you may have to, you know, pick and choose whether you want more human-like aspects or more mechanical-like aspects. Continuing on now, we get into some of her arm parts. Again, this is where things start getting really complicated in terms of build-up. As you can see here, all the various smaller components building into her arm. Uh, again, this is definitely one, oops, a different one, that will take a while to do. Uh, much the same here with some of her leg parts. Again, this is where the kit starts getting very complicated very quickly um, just because of how complex the build sequence is going to be. I'll skip over the poly caps. Uh, much the same as in the last one, come part for armbands. Oops. More all po joint parts. I'll have her move. Now we get into a lot of her armor parts for the flight units, or arms and legs, as well as a slightly different uh, chest piece. So this is another part you're going to need to make sure when you come to build her, you're going with the part you want. So be, pay attention to that. Uh, overall, much as with the other armor parts, detailing is quite nice. As I said, you might just come in and deepen one or two lines just to make them pop a little more, but other than that, it's quite nicely done. Getting towards the end now. Now we get into more of her leg armor parts. 
uh, much the same as with the flight unit and arms. Overall, it's a very complicated build sequence, but the little detailing, if you are willing to put in time and labor into it, will pay itself out in strides. Uh, more detailing for some of the other odds and end parts. Now, getting towards more along, uh, more of the armor parts as well as some of the other option parts for various other components. Overall, like I said, <laughs> this is a long and complicated build. <laughs> so, finishing up, we're getting more polycaps and flesh parts. Uh, these parts will appear much the same from the previous review. Uh, you get a single unfinished head, which nice had they included the some of the other options heads that we saw that were previously finished fortunately you get one sort of blank expression uh, more polygaps now one thing that this kit does have that the previous one did not is a display base uh, some of this is partially because of the added weight of everything you're going to probably need this just to keep her standing upright get all this back in and then we'll move on to the decals So, uh, hopefully, there we go. So overall, decals include all the smaller markings for her suit, as well as the uh, flight pack, and three different styles of eyes. Now, as I said before, it would have been nice had they include the different styles of heads, uh, so that you'd better utilize the uh, different styles of eyes, but unfortunately, they did not. Now, what's interesting is that they chose to do just a single color blue for the marking option. Instead of going with a similar uh, type of translucent color change effect for them. Frankly, I think given that they did the clear parts this way, it would have been better had they also done that. These uh, markings in the same sort of color scheme. Yeah, it might be a little matchy-matchy, but frankly, I think it would have really made things pop a lot more. Beyond that, I really don't have anything else to say on decals. Now, getting into the instruction sheet. Now, this should give you a fair warning that you're in for the long haul, given the thickness. Uh, assembly starts, obviously, with the head, and then it sort of moves down, filling, building out the main body of the figure before moving on to the armor parts. Again, this is a very very complicated build. I cannot stress that enough. Now, here's where things get a little problematic, and this could just be because instructions are not translated, but you're going to need to make sure when you're building it, you make the decision ahead of time whether you're going to build with just the humanoid form, with just the arms and legs, or if you're going to build the armored form, and you're going to need to get the armor parts out. So that's something you need to make a decision on almost immediately. So you don't go too far down build sequence for this as opposed to this. So that's something to be aware of. Beyond that, again, as I said before, it is a complicated build sequence. So you're going to need to do a lot of planning ahead as far as when and where you're going to be painting, what parts you need to paint painted when, what needs to get masked, and so on. So, again, this is definitely a kit you need to go in with a plan thought out ahead of time. As you can see here, once we get into the flight pack, things just snowball in terms of complexity. Now, obviously, once everything is built, it will look fantastic. However, if I can get the page to turn, getting there is the problem. 
because this kit does allow you a large plethora of options of how to do it, how to pose it, how to build it. So you're going to want to be prepared ahead of time. Don't just jump in, try and shake and bake this kit. Uh, I mean, the only way that's going to work is if you're just doing a straight build, not painting, not doing anything. Now, here at the end, thankfully they do include a very nice paint key. What a nice head they had. Paint numbers for the different parts, but... Oh, actually, I take the back. They do. Problem with things not being translated bluntly. That's on me. <laughs> but overall, this is one you need to go in. Read this. Back to front. And know it before you jump into it. So, overall, in comparison to the bikini version, this thing is an entirely different beast altogether. In terms of complexity, it's one of the most complex kits I've ever looked at. This is definitely one to not get unless you're prepared for a long project as doing her and doing her right is going to take a lot of time and patience. This is not one to rush. This is not one to just, you know, try and get her done. This is one. Don't set a deadline on her. Just take it slow. Read and reread the instructions before you do a sub assembly. Make sure you're doing it in such a way that if you need to paint something, you're able to do it. And you're not going to have to do a whole lot of masking down the road. So that was a look at Kotobukiya's, and I'm still going to probably butcher the name, Hesvelger Otter Kit uh, from their Frame Arms Girls series of kits. Again, a very complicated kit that you're going to need to take a lot of time on. So, until next time.